Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Spurs. We are back with another Champions League video and a very disappointing game for Bayern Munich. <laughs> they scored only eight goals. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what that's what we are here to talk about. Yeah. We are here to talk about Bayern Munich look, versus Barcelona. You look very happy, you know, after Barcelona lost, uh, lost as a Real Madrid fan. Very happy for you. you look very yeah, happy. That's a, as a a very very satisfying as a real madrid fan but uh, but yeah we are like we are here to talk about uh, bayern munich and barcelona game so we will keep real madrid uh, away because uh, yeah because uh, as a real madrid fan mm-hmm. i was very happy and also as a football fan it was a treat for us to watch uh, and uh, like you said eight goals to two uh, it is something uh, which we don't see every day so these are the games we should all enjoy even though if you are a barcelona fan you should mm-hmm. just Sit back, relax, and enjoy the game because uh, games with like a pinch of salt. Like, enjoy the game with a pinch of salt. You know? Yeah, with a pinch of salt. Correct. Of salt. Even though, okay. even though uh, you are at a receiving side, mm-hmm. side, uh, you can uh, anyway watch the game up and uh, enjoy it because that the, that was the kind of attacking football Bayern Munich played, and uh, they completely destroyed Barcelona. Uh, for the you know first uh, 50 20 minutes, you know, I thought it was an open game. Uh, Barnes for early, Barnes for early in the fifth minute only. But after that, after that, you know, Barcelona created an amazing chance with uh, David Alba put away uh, in Bayern Munich uh, as an own goal. So again, for the first 15, 20 minutes, you know, I thought it was an open game. Anything could happen in that game. I thought I personally thought, you know, it was a close game. And Messi, Messi created a few chances in between them. You know, he stuck up, stuck a post where nobody managed to get ahead, and he stuck a post. So again, I thought, you know, this could go either way though. And I thought, yeah, second goal would be important one. And Bayern Munich got the second goal through Ivan Pesic, you know, he made the darting into the defence and just, I thought he would score it to Lewandowski or maybe Muller, but he decided to go for it and score the goal. And with come, comes another one, so they got to buy one, get one and then I scored again, which I think so, you know, set the momentum for this game because if you look, you know, the way that they scored the goal, Bayern Munich were just, the Barcelona were just trying to, you know, cover those men and those uh, Ganapi and Pesic were just trying to, you know, get forward. And after that, you know, after four field goal, you know, all the players started moving forward then. First of all, only the those attacking players, but then Davis started moving forward, Kimi started moving forward, even Goretzka started moving forward, who was the center defensive midfielder. So again, after, you know, that uh, second and third goal, I think so, the that was clear to us and uh, we all know what happened after that. Exactly. And uh, if you if you know that I had put a story when uh, Bayern Munich scored their first goal under five minutes, I had put mm-hmm. a story saying, uh, that uh, Bayern Munich have made a statement and uh, yeah, it was actually a statement and what happened after that was uh, just a result of the the, <coughs> the German dominance in this uh, game. And uh, yeah, like you said, the first 15-20 minutes, the game was open but after then, after that, uh, Bayern Munich completely destroyed Barcelona and uh, and I believe Barcelona had lost the game in within 30 minutes only and uh, what happened after that was just a result of losing defending by Barcelona because uh, it looked like they have already uh, you know it it was like mm-hmm. they already harm and uh, and this is what led Bayern Munich to score even more goals so mm-hmm. eight goals to two and uh, games like this don't happen every day like I said and uh, yeah it, it's the beauty of Champions League I'll say. I think so, you know, Bayern, Barcelona should have, should, have, should, have, should have gone for damage control, you know, after, after you know, considering that fifth goal. I mm-hmm. thought, you know, they should have, you know, gone in defensive mode and trying to just, you know, shut out the game. You know, don't let, uh, don't let, even if you are not going to score, then at least uh, don't let them score also. But then mm-hmm. 5-2, it would have been, you know, some kind of a, even though 5-2 is a loss, is a loss. But still, instead of 8-2, you know, they would have gone to 5-2. But uh, still, they were not able to, you know, after that, close the game out mm-hmm. and continue to destroy Barcelona. Exactly, two, two goals goal and, and one assist. assist. In, in the space of seven minutes, two goals and one assist. Man, it's, they are trying yes, to sell. And he know. came off the bench and scored those two mm. goals. Uh, that is a contribution of three goals. Uh, mm. Yeah, Hans Flick, Hans Flick would be proud of his boy. Mm. And Barcelona, uh, you know, they were trying to just sell him to each and every club. You know, they are just, you know, who will be at the way by putting only like a putting up. They are paying a bunch of money. They are trying to sell putting to everyone. So again, mm-hmm. uh, it would have been, you know, a per, something, a personal satisfaction for him because again, Pasa just, uh, and even the Spanish media just criticized him, you know, day in and day out, you used to talk about him, they used to say that mm-hmm. this is the worst signing, worst signing, worst signing, and after that, you know, it, it goes on to perform like that against Barcelona in space of just seven minutes. So again, um, personal satisfaction for him, but again, that, that uh, he did not the, celebrate those goals against yes. Barcelona. Yeah, he, he just uh, refused to celebrate, but uh, yeah, that's what they do when they're playing against their uh, their uh, previous club and 
what what are you know, i just want to uh, ask you one thing does that, that show no man man or barcelona because again coutinho is playing uh, good for bayern munich not that actually but good for bayern munich rather than he played for barcelona you know do you think that barcelona have a man 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 management problem you know because they are buying these men they are buying them they are playing all these players they, 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 they are do, not they, properly, they are not trying to use no proper they are trying not trying to use them properly mm-hmm. as a collective unit so i think so there's a problem in their man management system you know Barce- barcelona are spending too much money and uh, yeah you know uh, the downfall of barcelona started when they sold neymar to psg because mm-hmm. uh, when they got those got those 200 million uh, they did not uh, spend uh, spend those 200 million wisely you know they bought dembele for so many uh, 100 and what 120 million 120 million, million. and uh, then they bought griezmann for about 100 million then they bought uh, coutinho as well for 150 million something uh so yeah i believe that they have that uh, man management problem also they hijacked that uh, deal from uh, roma about of that uh, malcolm marshall that uh, mm-hmm. malcolm malcolm ah malcolm, malcolm. Or, sorry malcolm marshall is the west indian father <laughs> <laughs> yeah they hijacked that uh, that signing as well but uh, mm-hmm. but when he played for barcelona he did not do anything and actually and then they sold him as well also okay, i think so Uh, but Ma- Ma- Malcolm was you know what Malcolm was the one you know who was trying to give hundred percent to Barcelona. If you look at that, you know, other than Messi, you know, Malcolm was the one you know who was trying to trying to do something for this club. But again, he just got thrown uh, off to Saint uh, Saint Saint Petersburg. Yeah, he was, and also Malcolm was only twenty one years old. So mm-hmm. Barcelona should have trusted him at least, should have given him chances for two or three seasons uh, more, so that uh, he could uh, you know grow as a player there. Mm-hmm. And if he then he performs to us, uh, fails to perform, then uh, we could have uh, as a Barcelona. uh you know then they could have like uh, thought ki jaane do abhi ye kuch nahi kar raha abhi have buy a new player but uh, they did not give enough chances to him as well and uh, they bought griezmann but uh, half of the time griezmann is sitting on the bench and he's doing nothing uh, and uh, in, in between they were also talking about griezmann uh, not getting uh, you know passes from messi or not getting mm-hmm. enough attention in the team so in between th- things like those also happened so yeah definitely by uh, sorry barcelona have a man management problem and uh, they are not making the full use of their la messia uh, mm. uh, you know uh, their uh, club as well. academy 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 exactly they are not making use of their academy as well because mm. after the after uh, iniesta zavi these guys uh, went then uh, they did not have players who uh, you know fit in the team and uh, perform like that way. also we know about arthur who was a young promising talent mm. but uh, they sold him to juventus and they bought in pejanic so you know the uh, the kind of shambles barcelona is in right now and so you think uh, kike setien might get sacked i think so there should be a lot of changes and uh, i've i've just heard a rumor that i've just heard a report that messi might leave barcelona in 2021 so he has given you know ultimate sort of an ultimate you know if you don't do this this year then i think so i will leave i will find my something because again if you look you know for past 5 5 6 years you know uh, messi was 28 you know back when the last time they won champions league and yeah, since that you know, there have been and uh, after since you know they have just poor performances so are you do you think that he has wasted his prime years in uh, barcelona because again i have read a report and i think so many people were you know, thinking like that only because i have wasted now peak peak years his prime years you know where he would have been you know at a, even bigger player than he is right now and just suddenly those five six years are gone and now he's trying to move so do you think you know that they can you know, do a, do an overall change because they need it they certainly need it i think so yeah there's uh, there's a need to uh, change for barcelona team and uh, also you know Leo, the team is uh, really dependent on leo messi and uh, mm. when they are playing in away game then uh, and when messi does not perform you know what happens mm. we'll talk about 2060 season when uh, atletico madrid kicked barcelona off they scored uh, 2-0 mm. and uh, afterwards then uh, even roma defeated barcelona by scoring three goals to zero even though mm. barcelona had a Uh, 4-1 goal lead. Then uh, they considered three goals in the next game. Mm-hmm. And again, last year also Barcelona were uh, three goals uh, ahead of Liverpool going on to the second leg. But uh, in the second leg again, they considered four. So it is important for Leo Messi to step his game up at away game, especially. Mm-hmm. Also, we'll talk about the season, uh, the game against uh, PSG as well. Everyone mm-hmm. remembers what happens in uh, happened in Camp Nou, but uh, but people tend to ignore or forget mm-hmm. that Barcelona had lost four goals to nil mm-hmm. uh, when they played an away game to PSG. So yes, Messi needs to step his game up, especially when they are playing away. Uh, and uh, if that does not happen, it is going to be impossible for Barcelona to win the Champions League. because uh, it, it's important to be consistent over mm. two games in champions league and not mm. just one okay now it's a uh, it's a uh, barcelona shambles right now 
what do you think you know could uh, manage the pass right now because i think i personally think kk city team will be kicked out of the pass board uh, after this after uh, at this weekend only see it's not kk city alone to be blamed because it's the entire barcelona uh, squad uh, you know when kk city was appointed as a coach everyone were, was excited they, they were like he's going to bring the cry of policy and uh, oh. all those things but uh, that did not happen it did not happen because uh, players uh, failed to perform uh, so it is important for the players to uh, play according to the manager as well and uh, so this is why only kk city is not responsible it is the entire unit and uh, they they were also talking about uh, barcelona's president uh, mm-hmm. being uh, pain in the ass for them so yeah so those things also matter and uh, yes so so again i think uh, would be uh, so yeah coming to your question if kk city would be uh, kicked off as a manager he might most probably be but uh, it is going to be uh, difficult for them to find a another replacement because they they did this exact same team uh, same thing to valverde as well last season this year they are doing this to kk city so it's not only the manager it's also the players but again if you are players are not going to manage and they, if they don't believe in their manager then what's the use of that manager because again you can't throw exactly. each and every player or you can do is just change the manager and hope for the best okay yes uh, no matter how good your manager is if if the players are not able to uh, mm-hmm. uh, perform well with him then uh, then then you should most probably change your manager same mm-hmm. same same thing happened with virat kohli and anil kumble as well you know mm-hmm. anil kumble was a great coach but uh, if virat kohli does not agree to him it is ultimately virat kohli who has to play not anil kumble mm-hmm. so when those things arises those conflicts arises it's better to change your manager than then the players because mm. players are uh, there to stay and uh, the manager is not the one who is going to play so mm. yes they are going to be sitting and uh, as far as his uh, replacement is concerned uh, if they bring zavi back in the club they mm. that will uh, you know give their fans a hope and uh, he might actually win few trophies or do something for the club because it's his childhood club as well mm. so again okay, there are a lot of like a few names you know coming out uh, massimiliano agri allegri is one uh Mauricio Pochettino who who managed Spurs you know who brought that Spurs you know mm-hmm. from that uh, mid table mentality to winning the champions champions league mentality champions league winning for uh, champions league squad so okay, can he is one of the option and the other option is Ronald Koeman but i don't think he would he would uh, uh, be a Barca Barca manager right now because he has to manage Netherlands so these three options are there Xavi um, Xavi is there Mauricio Pochettino is there and Messi Milan is there who do you think is the best suited i think he is Mauricio Pochettino Xavi, you know, uh, I think so. They had a talks between. I had heard that they had talks between them, and Xavi demanded a full control of the club. You know, full means full control. Uh, and Barcelona, you know, they they were no no no. We will not give you full control. Can you know just control the teams? So there was uh, some disp- uh, disputes between them. But Mauricio Pochettino, who first said that I would not uh, manage Barcelona because of Espanol, but now he is backing to that statement. You know, and he say that anything can happen. So who do you think you know who can take charge of Barcelona? Personally, I feel it should be Mauricio Pochettino. Mauricio Pochettino. Yeah, Pochettino is going to be a, a huge prospect. He he is a good uh, option as well. But uh, but I think it, they Barcelona might move uh, move to Xavi because uh, you know even though Xavi has asked the full control of the club, he mm. might actually and even if he gets it, it it shouldn't be a problem because I don't think uh, he is going to uh, you know increase problems for Barcelona because uh, Barcelona is his childhood club. He's played for Barcelona for so many years. He loves he loves Barcelona fans. Loves him, love mm-hmm. love him, and uh, he's also played with players like Messi, Suarez. So, mm-hmm. so the players in and out know him. The managers in and out know him. The uh, yeah, the managers of the club in and out know him. Everyone there uh, knows him. So, if he gets the uh, you know charge of Barcelona, then mm-hmm. it would uh, you know uh, increase the hopes of the fans as well. and uh, that could be good for barcelona as well and uh, we all know that uh, all these clubs are moving on towards the legends for uh, managing chelsea mm-hmm. did with lampard and uh, pirlo pirlo is manager of juventus now so why not barcelona go with xavi only that's what i feel he should be again so you are going with uh, what barcelona think but i think what is best for barcelona so again uh, we agree to disagree on that you think xavi i think pochettino um, so yeah uh, all the best for you know barca to you know bring that change in it But I think so. You know, let's talk about uh, Bayern Munich right now because Bayern Munich, you know, the, the the form they are in right now, they could just you know smash each and every team. And even if they you know face City in the semi final, I personally think you know City are underdogs in that match and Bayern Munich are certainly favorite. Even though you know City have that dominance and superiority over them, but I still think that Bayern Munich are dominant. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think uh, Bayern Munich are dominant. Uh, 
yeah absolutely bayern munich are going to be uh, are going to have that upper hand against city but let's not forget uh, even though we create so much hype we start with zero and in the new game mm-hmm. so that is going to be important for bayern munich they should know that they have to perform consistently not just in one game or two games and uh, the kind of form bayern munich is in right now i believe uh, they will uh, they will dominate the game against city as well but it is going to be difficult because mm-hmm. city have pep guardiola and uh, pep guardiola has uh, previously managed bayern munich as well he knows bayern munich players in and out and the club their culture everything so yes he might make use of his experience at uh, bayern munich and uh, help and that experience would help city to uh, win against bayern munich mm-hmm. but uh, it's going to be difficult so yes it's going to be a close game um looking at the bayern munich bayern munich attack you know uh, what i say is you know there's a ship and uh, you know what is talking on the ship and there are five six holes you know and you have to plug all the five you have uh, three plugs and you have to you know plug all the holes in that so you know looking at that you know if i am a defending team i look at i look at it in that way because i have to feel because again um the attacking strength you know they can, they can come from anywhere image can move on from left side right side uh, davis can move on from left side you have pace it and uh, can have be making those runs and even if you, you know you feel you know feel that pocket then there might be a cross you know in that uh, levandosi can turn it in or mula can turn it in or maybe if you leave the best space between the full back and center back then every and uh, pace can move into it and even if you you know left you are uh, you know you become narrow uh, what to say narrow defense line then your flanks get exposed so again what do you do means because you have all this issue control and if you you know if 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 the all this thing not happen i i've seen to twice or thrice you know and i've seen this uh, more times in barca by which that uh, goretzka makes a uh, uh, that leon goretzka makes a run you know to the middle uh, like uh, darting run into the middle okay anything can happen with this uh, by which and what holes you will at what time to fill I know Pep Guardiola is a genius, but again, these are just you know too many holes to fill uh, at the same time. So do, in that way, no, I think he, personally, I think the Bayern which are too superior side. Right? But again, uh, Pep Guardiola can do it. We all know. And I think so. There is a one problem with Bayern which, uh, if you look at, if you look in certain way, uh, Bayern mm-hmm. which like to keep a high line, you know. And if uh, I know that KDB is uh, KDB is a great passer. They have David Silva. They have uh, Laporte who, who can play the ball. Ederson has played uh, quite quite many long balls. So again. Uh, the one thing only I see, I see, you know, the Manchester United dominating the band, which is to, uh, mm. you know, play that uh, long ball, you know, like a precise, accurate uh, long ball onto the player, you know, who's making a run and scoring a goal. Because again, uh, like we saw in the first goal, uh, Barca played a long ball to Jordi Alba, who then just ran onto the pitch, delivered a cross, and it was an own goal. So again, uh, that is what I feel, you know, the band, which you know, uh, you know, against Bayern, which, you know, who like to play with a high, high, high defense line. They should just you know try to uh, opponent just try to you know make a long ball, accurate ball, and uh, you know score a goal. So what do you feel, Kim? I mean, what can be Pep's tactic? Tactics if you look in that way. Uh, I'll I'll I might not be able to tell you about Pep's strategy because uh, Pep is like I said, he's a genius and uh, he likes to uh, have that possession. He likes to uh, you know mm. uh, have ball with his own team, and uh, so I guess that's what he'll be doing. But uh, as far as Bayern Munich is concerned, uh, I've noticed that their uh, preparation is always spot on. I've mm-hmm. heard that uh, the Bayern Munich players are practicing in like th- they divided the ground into 30 squares, and all the players were practicing in that uh, 30 squares, you know, so that they could practice not giving Leo Messi the space. So, mm-hmm. so when you prepare in that way, that uh, that absolutely helps. So yeah, they will be preparing in the same way against Manchester City also, and. Uh, This is the exactly reason, exact reason why Bayern Munich might even dominate the game against City. Um, I also feel the City are you know more strong of a opponent uh, than Barcelona where people again we all know Barcelona, Barcelona were dependent on heavily dependent on Bayern Munich Messi, but Messi. that's not the case with uh, Manchester. So even though you know De Bruyne is a important player, but again other than De Bruyne, they, they have David Silva, they have Bernard Silva, they have Raheem Sterling, they have Gabriel Jesus. You can just take on name, names, names, and you can just say. But uh, one problem I see is uh, that defensive, that backline. Other than other than Amit Lepot and Ederson, you know, I don't uh, see anyone you know uh, fit uh, anywhere. Kyle Walker is a good option, uh, but again, he can be caught uh, caught while doing you know counter attack. So again, uh, that defense is gonna pro- cause problem. So what do you feel? Can uh, by by Manchester can dominate that defense? Yes, they absolutely can. Uh, we also what they did against Barcelona, and uh, they'll be carrying that momentum with them. And uh, with momentum on your side, uh, you can uh, do anything. We all know what hap- uh, 
you know how a team uh, plays well when they have momentum with them mm-hmm. uh, you remember the game against barcelona versus psg that game you, mm-hmm. you must remember when uh, barcelona scored those early goals they had momentum with them and uh, with momentum they scored as many as six goals mm-hmm. so with that kind of momentum which bayern munich have right now the momentum of scoring eight goals they are going to be uh, they are they are going to be destructive in the game against city as well also let's not forget that bayern mm-hmm. munich also destroyed chelsea when they uh, mm-hmm. when they played that home game and even then they had scored like five goals and uh, five goals there eight goals here so yeah anything can happen and uh, bayern munich are perfectly going to be a uh, favorite to win the game so we will come to a topic we will we'll come to a question right now atletico madrid defeated by rb leipzig yesterday and now uh, bayern munich you know they were destroyed by bayern munich so do you feel you know after a long time you know we have not say we are, there's uh, no spanish team you know in the same final of the uh, champions league do you feel is you know the era of spanish domination is over like now with no, messi uh, and no not really I, i i won't say that it's the end of uh, the spanish dominance or anything because uh, let's let's not forget real madrid last two seasons they lost the game against ajax and manchester city mm. and uh, you know manchester city was a good opponent this time and uh, when you're playing a game of round of 16 or you're playing quarter finals you don't always uh, get to face uh, teams of such huge level you might get teams like leipzig or uh, atlanta games like this and uh, teams like real madrid or barcelona these teams can easily defeat them and uh, so i don't think it's it's an end of spanish dominance it's just that it happened this season and uh, next season i promise real madrid or either barcelona any of these teams can be in the semi final or the final so yeah i don't think it's the yeah but if we look you know in the past i past you know real madrid man they were they were defeating manchester city they had defeated manchester city you know once in semi final then they defeated Bar- barcelona by you know twice or thrice and you know Bar- barcelona also defeated a bayern munich they also defeated manchester city they also they were able to defeat but right now they are not so again I think it's a, you see, know, let's, uh let's please don't forget that uh, Real Madrid did not have Sergio Ramos in both the round of 16 games in which mm-hmm. they lost and uh, you could say that they are uh, heavily dependent on them but uh, the game uh, the kind of game they played against City uh, both the goals which City scored uh, was only because uh, of Real Madrid's defense mistake and not because City exploited or anything it was due to Real mm-hmm. Madrid's mistake and uh, if they avoid making such mistakes they might uh, even win the uh, league or uh, more games So uh, I was just going to ask you whether you know all the other teams have uh, risen their competition or not. But yeah, I've got your answer mm-hmm. right now. I was thinking, you know, maybe because I think you know personally, the English, English team. You know, last time we had an all English final in Champions League, and this time also no Spanish team. So I feel, you know, the the other teams. So maybe it's not the end of Spanish dominance. You know, they have now got a proper you know competition in Champions League right now, rather than they uh, what they had in previous season. All the teams are raising their game right now. They will fail to defeat you know Atletico Madrid, but again they are. They will be again favorites to win the Champions League next season. So yeah, mm. that's all we have for you today in the today's show. Uh, please leave your comments or anything you have in the down in the comment section uh, right below. We will be linking our uh, blogs and Instagram posts. So please follow us uh, there also. And see ya. Talk.